You guys sent me a bunch of questions on Instagram, so I'm gonna do my makeup and get ready for a very busy day while answering all of your personal get to know me questions so that I can update you properly. So how are you dealing with living alone for almost a year now? I am loving it and I didn't even realize that it might be a difficult thing to do until people start asking me like oh don't you get lonely and isn't it hard and don't you get bored like my grandma was at my apartment the other day and she was like it's really nice here but isn't it just so quiet and boring for you and i was like no i will say when i first moved in it was a really weird change in pace like going from living with my family when there was so much noise every single day to then just sitting here and it was just super quiet and i was alone it was really weird and it took some adjusting to i would say within two weeks i was okay though and ever since I love it. I could probably do this for the rest of my life. I'm just so happy. Like, even though it's almost been a year, I still go to bed every single night giddy. Because I'm like, I can't believe, like, this is mine. I get my own freedom and peace and quiet and no one's bothering me. And this leads us on to the next question. When you move to London, will your boyfriend move there too or will you be living in different cities? Me and my boyfriend are preparing to move in together literally right now. So my contract in this Birmingham apartment ends in the beginning of June and then the plan was always to move to London and ideally the plan was always for us to move together and it's actually happening like I've been on right move every single day getting excited about apartments if you know me if you went to school with me whoever's known me since I was probably like 10 years old I have always said I wanted to move to London it has been the one thing I've never shut up about so the fact that it's happening in a few months me and my boyfriend are gonna be living together. It's very like big adult things. And I'm not gonna lie, I think this time last year, I knew we were gonna move in together at some point and the thought of it terrified me. But my plan of moving out alone and being independent in Birmingham so that I could see my boyfriend more often, but also just have my own life and practice living alone, that plan actually paid off because we've seen each other so much and he stayed over and we've kind of had that experience of what it would be like to, to have a morning routine together and all of that and it's given me so much more confidence and I'm honestly ready. Like, I wanna move in with him tomorrow. My vision board, yeah, half of it is just pictures of my London apartment. I'm gonna get it. I don't know how, but that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. It's going to happen, I'm so sure about it. Um, in terms of area in London, though, that's the only thing that we're trying to work out. But we're definitely moving to central London and right now it's between like Kensington, Chelsea area or Canary Wharf. How did you start writing the book and how was the process like? So to set the scene, I had finished university in the summer of 2022 and then I'd moved back in with my family in September 2022. I had not at that point like gotten any plan of what I wanted to do or like apply to jobs. So I was pursuing social media because that was my real passion. So every single day, like I was doing up TikTok videos, I was posting on YouTube and September, October, November, December, no views, like no growth whatsoever, but I kept at it because I was so passionate about it. I just had the idea. I was like, I'm gonna write an ebook. I want there to be an ebook around self love. So I literally just opened up my laptop, planned out the whole book, every single chapter, how it's gonna be set out, what each chapter is gonna start and end with, what messaging I want, who is the target audience of the book, like everything. I did so much research online about what it takes to write a self-help book and I learned about the entire process. Once I did my research and written the outline of the book, I was hella confident. I was like, this is genius. Like I would want to buy and read this book myself. But all of this was when I had no audience. Then my YouTube channel popped off in around Jan, Feb time of 2023. So only a couple of months later. Then I was so busy trying to keep up with all of that, be consistent, improve all of my videos to keep the audience that I was gaining and the virality I had that I basically put the book aside completely. A couple of months later, I had management. My audience was really big. And I told them, hey, I've been writing this self-help book what do you think? And they go, we think that this could be actually published. And then that's how it went from an ebook to an actual book that's gonna be in bookstores, it's gonna be available to order online, like you're actually gonna be able to physically hold it in your hands. The book is also going to be on Audible and I'm gonna be the one narrating it. It's also available to pre-order if you click the link in the description. I feel so confident about everything in this book. Like writer's block who? Like actually writer's block who? I think, this was meant to happen that I was supposed to finish the last few bits of this book at this point of my career because last year I was just doubting myself. Now I'm so much more aware of what my audience wants, what content works the best, what I need to put out there that I haven't already put out there with my social media content. What does your book talk about? Give us a little sneak peek. Love ya. Love you too. Okay, so the book is split into three parts. Part one is understanding, part two is healing, and part three is reawakening. Part one has four chapters, each of which 
are dedicated to a different part of understanding what self-love actually means because I feel like a lot of people talk about self-love the fact that you need to have it and practice it and whatnot but what does it actually mean to love yourself how are you even supposed to do that I wanted the book to kind of be an extension of my YouTube in a way that it's so structured and every single chapter is like a checkpoint like there's no questions left unanswered but you need to keep reading to find out like no Oh, and also before chapter one even begins, there's an introduction chapter, which goes so into detail with my personal life and why I even started self-love. It dives into like my ex relationships. Chapter two is healing. So this is for the people that are really just trying to heal their old wounds. So it talks about shadow work in detail and depth and how to actually do that. It talks about how you can get over a breakup, whether that's a breakup with your partner, your friend, your family. Um, it talks about mastering detachment in detail. And then there are chapters on other topics as well. And then lastly is reawakening. Reawakening is all about, okay, I've learned self-love. I now know exactly what it is and I've completely healed myself. So now what? And I think that is something that not a lot of people talk about ever and it's something that I have really discovered over the last year you know I'm now in a relationship how am I going to balance self-love with that and so it has an entire chapter dedicated to that um, and other parts of your life that you are going to have to revisit from a different perspective and mindset now that you're full of self-love every single chapter also ends with a chapter summary and a chapter homework because you know I just want to make your guys's life easier I'm going in with my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This foundation is the bomb. I wanted to hate it so bad because I've always been a drugstore foundation girly. I don't believe in spending so much money on foundation because I'm like, don't they just all do the same job? Turns out, no. <laughs> I'm so annoyed because when I get through this, I'm just gonna have to keep repurchasing it. How did you personally start to increase your confidence? What made you want to change? What made me want to change was the fact that I floated through my entire life thinking that other people were better than me. Plus, I always knew there was something inside of me. I always knew it because I always wanted to be in front of a camera. I just didn't have the confidence to meet it. I always wanted to have a career where I was in front of people or I could speak about things and, and have attention. I just didn't have the confidence to go and do it. So I had all of these desires inside of me, but my mindset wasn't matching up to allow me to achieve them. That's how I knew I had to change. And I used starting university as my kind of place to be able to do that because before university, so when I was in sixth form slash college, I was having a glow up, I got rid of my braces, I got contact lenses, I was learning how to do my makeup, I changed my dress sense, and I was doing all of these things to try and feel like I was a prettier girl, but my mindset hadn't caught up. That was the issue. You can change everything about you in terms of appearance, but if your mind ain't right, your confidence ain't gonna be right. Confidence literally has nothing to do with the way you look. I think so many people get that wrong. Cause listen, I started university and I was looking all cute and all of a sudden all the boys liked me and everyone wanted to be my friend and everyone was complimenting me and I had gone seven, eight years of school having the opposite of that. No one liked me, no one wanted to date me. I still identified and felt on the inside and saw myself as that awkward 15 year old girl who was just lame and a loser and a bit of a dork. And that's why mastering your self perception is key. So my personal journey with confidence honestly started with faking it till you make it. Like pretending to be something I wasn't which helped me fix my self perception because it allowed me to distance myself from the insecure self perception I had. Basically don't keep doing the same things you're comfortable with doing every single day because if they got you here to a point where you want to change and you want to seek advice then it clearly didn't work. How did you meet your partner and how did you stay together for so long? This was the most asked question in the entire Q&A. Everyone wanted to know the love story behind me and my boyfriend. So I'm gonna spill all of the tea. Honestly, pause this video, grab a snack or grab a drink because this is the, the most long-winded love story ever, okay? It took us a while to actually get together. So it all started in 2021. I was on my self-love year. No dating, no talking to boys, none of that. Then comes around the month of June and I was so proud. I was actually celebrating myself because I had reached six months without talking to a boy or doing anything remotely romantic and that was a huge accomplishment for me. Um, and I physically like and mentally and emotionally felt the difference in my mindset and who I was. I'd made mad progress. And what's so weird is it was at the time I was celebrating myself, the six month mark, 
that my boyfriend came into my life. So one day I had re-downloaded Twitter. It probably after about like four or five months, I barely used that app. I think I was just really bored one day. So I was like, okay, I'll use it. I was scrolling on my timeline because I was bored and I saw someone had tweeted this picture of a museum exhibition that I'd been wanting to go to for the last five years. So naturally, as soon as I see this picture, I just like it. Turns out the person who had tweeted that picture was my now boyfriend. Basically, I was the only person that liked that tweet. So I instantly stood out to him. He saw my Instagram. He was like, okay, I really want to talk to this girl but I need to get her attention so he saw I had 20k followers and I just uploaded a picture right so he was like okay her inbox is going to be full of people dming her loads of um, like comments and like notifications so if I follow her she's not going to see that I have so he waited three days before he followed me when he followed me he put his instagram on public so that when he did I'd be able to stalk him back to see if I liked him back so smart because when he followed me I noticed he followed me, which half of the time I didn't because I don't even follow everyone back. So I was like, this guy is actually really cute. I followed him back, he did nothing. Two days had passed and I was on my story doing a Q&A of museum recommendations with my followers. Something I did like often before I would have a day in London. My fo so my followers at the time were telling me which museums to go to on my trip to London and he uses that to DM me and say, hey, can you just send me whatever recommendations you got? Cause I'm going to London soon as well. And here's the thing, anytime a guy has ever DM'd me saying, oh, you're beautiful or whatever, I won't respond, especially my self love year, you know? If a guy's trying to flirt, no. But because he asked such an innocent question, I was gonna give him the reply. He then used that as an opportunity to bring up the museum exhibition that he tweeted that I wanted to go to. So then we were having a super casual, friendly conversation about that. We then spent the next three hours just talking about traveling reading museums like such a wholesome conversation getting to know each other i just never met anybody who even like had such good conversational skills as him like the conversation was amazing it was energizing it was inspiring he i could tell he actually genuinely wanted to get to know who i was rather than just give me a bunch of flirty lines after three hours of talking he goes i would love to ask you on a date to which i said Okay, the date was amazing. He was actually really, really shy. <laughs> and yeah, he took me out for Italian food for lunch. I went home and I realized I really liked him and he was a great guy and he was such a gentleman on the date. It was the first time that a guy had ever like opened his car door for me. But I went home and I was like, okay, I followed that experience that the universe just gave me. How do I feel about it? And I thought, no, I made myself a promise to stay single and not be in a relationship for a year. So I'm gonna do that. So we were texting and I just said, hey, like this isn't the right time for me right now. I just don't really wanna get to know anyone. And he was like, that's absolutely fine. He was super understanding. September rolled around, I had just started university and he had not left my head all summer, but not even in a romantic sense. I was just like, I've just genuinely never met a person like him. I would rather have him in my life as a friend because I valued our conversation and our connection so much. So I randomly texted him in September after three months of like not talking to each other, we and followed each other, everything. And I said, hey, um, I've been thinking about you a lot recently and I feel like I kind of just ended things too quick. I would love for us to be friends though because I genuinely did have such a good time with you and he replied and he goes so would i so literally every 10 days we would have these really nice fulfilling conversations and honestly it just meant so much to me because no one in uni around me was like that so it was so nice to be able to talk to someone who was like-minded and guys there wasn't even anything wrong with him it's just at this point of my self-love journey it'd been like nine ten months i was so hyper independent i was so addicted to the self-love solo dating lifestyle i don't care like until i'm genuinely ready to be in a relationship all of the 10 out of 10s, I'm blind to them. I genuinely can't even see them. Then uh, 2022 comes around. So Valentine's Day comes around. I'm like spending Valentine's Day alone. But around this time, because it's January, February of the next year after my self-love year, I was already thinking like, I think it's time to start dating again. I did my self-love year. I need to get back out there. Otherwise I'm literally gonna be alone for the rest of my life because I'm gonna develop commitment issues. So we have been speaking a lot and I texted him and I was like, let's go for another dinner to just catch up. <laughs> so we went out for the dinner 
and it was like completely friendly until halfway through the dinner i was like hey should we just turn this into a date and he basically goes yeah i'm down and then he would literally switched up like that was immediately in date mode got me flowers on that same date and it was honestly an amazing date and then for two months after we were dating we were going down to london he actually bought me tickets to the museum exhibition that i had liked on his twitter when we first met and he took me there literally a few weeks after i said let's actually start dating he took me on the most amazing dates just for two months to pass and for me to say actually i don't want to be in a relationship in my okay i sound like a horrible person but in my defense i was doing it because i genuinely cared about him and i was like i can't keep being in this if i know i can't give it my all at this point i was becoming very aware of my avoidant attachment style and i was like i would actually hate myself if i was to break this boy's heart he did try to talk me out of it but in the end we were just like okay cool and followed each other on everything didn't speak again whatever i continued with my just solo lifestyle i was finishing uni finished uni summer came around i was cool living my best life not committed to anyone and then july comes around so now it's been about a year since we first met but obviously we haven't seen or spoken to each other or heard anything about each other in maybe like three or four months um and i went to this festival with my friends and when the headliner comes on we come to the front of the crowd so just in the front section of this festival for at the end of the festival when the headline is on there's 40,000 people in the crowd so i'm chilling with my friends whatever look to my right he is two people away from me my now boyfriend was literally a meter or two standing away from me i looked there i was like and i felt all of these feelings rushing back to me and i was like i think this is a sign because what i didn't mention is in those three four months that we hadn't spoken I spent those three to four months reading every single book on love and attachment I could find because I recognized my mistake in dating him and not being ready for it. And I was like, I need to work on myself. So my self-love journey kind of shifted into let me heal my attachment style. I had no idea that that was even a thing before. And on, thank you, universe. Like, honestly, the universe is my biggest protector because you're telling me I spent three or four months learning about healthy relationships and then he was just presented to me like that. And he actually texted me like, four days after the festival and he sent me this message and he was like hey i hope you're well sorry for texting you out of the blue i just wanted to say it was so nice to see you enjoying yourself at the festival um i hope you've been well and i was like oh. i see this text i get so excited and so happy i immediately call him we spend the night talking we then start dating again and the rest is history and we've been we were dating for a whole month in that period he asked me to be his girlfriend after 30 days of like actually properly dating and we have now been together for 19 months because we celebrated our 18 month anniversary the other day so like a year and a half and to answer the second part of your question i think the reason we've been together so long is because we are so into our self-growth and we try to be as self-aware as possible i genuinely have never been with a person like that before i think we've had a few traditions in our relationship which has helped it last so long so we celebrate our every month anniversary so that's on the 11th of every month we always make sure we have a date night and then every single month we do a proper in-depth check-in where we're like how are you really um what do you like about a relationship what would you want to change or improve about a relationship like we really have a deep conversation um about what we could do to improve or how we could communicate better or what we should try differently for the next month and we always have these relationship goals other than that though i would say this is the first relationship i've been in where it gets better every single day it's been a year and a half it like yes there was a honeymoon phase within the first six months year or whatever however long it lasts this compares nothing to that because we still have all of the romance and all of the extravagance and all of the giddiness and we still fall asleep on the phone to each other but now we know more of each other now we've seen each other in every emotion in every crisis in every problem now we've met each other's families we're like in each other's lives and we're obsessed with each other if your relationship doesn't get better every single day and if you believe in a honeymoon stage girl does your boyfriend not want to be filmed would love to see content of your guys dynamic no he doesn't want to be filmed that's why he's always cut out in the vlogs i do get a lot of questions about that he's just a private guy he's never really been into the social media thing he just likes to do his own thing and obviously i want to respect that so if it's not his thing i will keep him out of it and if one day he says to me like yeah i'd be down to be in the vlog or whatever like if we move in together and he moves and he changes his mind then he would make appearances but he has told 
told me that he's down to be a guest on my podcast so stay tuned guys i think i'm gonna try and put lashes on today i'm using these wildcat lashes in cosmo um these are the lashes i wore in my how to be a bitch video on my main channel which you guys just loved since you did not have a normal childhood does that affect you right now it used to affect me like almost on a daily basis when i was a teenager it just haunted me a lot i would say even when i was in university it probably haunted me a lot maybe two years now i honestly think since doing the inner work and the self-love and just just getting tunnel vision on creating the life i want and the version of myself that i want that it just it's not even a thing for me anymore whatever adversities i've experienced in the past they were for the best of me there's nothing to complain about there's nothing to well no there are things to be said about because it is a sucky situation but my perspective has changed where it's like I don't look at myself like a victim like oh my god I can't believe I didn't have this or I didn't have a normal relationship with my parents or this or this happened to me in my childhood it's like I wouldn't be who I am today if that didn't happen to me that's what had to happen then so be it and I think there is every single person on this planet goes through their own set of adversities just because somebody else had a perfect childhood and a perfect family and has is super close to their parents and I'm not doesn't mean they don't have their own set of adversities and things that they struggle with and things that they lack which I probably do have I honestly look at life as a game now and I'm like it's I just don't take it personally at all I stop seeing life as like this is happening to me to the universe is always looking out for me and I was I had to have this life because I was strong enough to deal with the challenges that came to it and this was always going to be my life path no matter what to be honest are there times that I still think about it absolutely I think it was actually the other day I saw this social media post that um triggered like a childhood memory but triggered a good one but i think because it triggered a good one it made me upset because it reminded me that even in bad relationships or even with people that you have to cut off there were good times and there's still nostalgia and there's still parts that you could possibly romanticize and i don't romanticize it because i know exactly like what the situation is but when i saw that and kind of sent me into this nostalgic mode and i felt really really sad for like a couple of days because it was on my mind but now I feel okay again I just I let myself feel the emotions I let myself process it I let myself feel the full extent of it for a long time I used to try and push away the emotions and distract myself and that's why it was always inside of me but there will always be a part of you that resonates with it because I think especially when it comes to childhood that links so much into your inner child and your inner child is always a part of you so it will never leave your mind but it doesn't have to negatively affect you all the time where do your parents live never heard about them in your videos so the reason that i don't talk about my parents in my videos is because i don't have a relationship with them i have lived with my grandparents for the past few years now um they also like basically raised me from the age of seven to be honest i actually have no idea where each of my parents are <laughs> I don't know which city either of them is in right now. What fear slash insecurity are you currently working on? P.S. Never stop your vlog vids. I'm so glad you like them. This is such a good question because I went through this yesterday. So the story time behind this answer is yesterday I was emailing my publishers and they basically told me there's going to be a book signing event for the release of my book on its release date 15th of August and a bookshop in London wants to host the event and they were like you, you can tell all your followers they're going to come they can get their book signed. Amazing right? That was already my idea. I told them I wanted to do that and they said well you can do the book signing or we can also make it into an entire q a event and they'll you know you'll be on a little stage we'll get someone to chair it to ask you a bunch of questions about the book and then all of your audience will be sat down in front of you and they can ask you any questions and then you'll be on the stage answering them before you then go and meet everyone and sign all of their books and i read that and i was terrified i was like that's so scary it's very intimidating for me and i looked at the email and i thought i could so easily just choose the easier option of just book signing and then i'll go home and then it's done and before i could think about it more i just responded to the email i was like yes let's do that entire q a event because i knew that's what i had to do i was like if that's scaring me then that's the option i have to go for what do you mean i'm scared and i'm intimidated by this what the hell how am i ever going to progress in my life if i have fears my goal in life is to make sure i get rid of all of my fears because otherwise i'm not fully developed as a person stuff like getting on a stage and speaking to people shouldn't make me nervous and the more i say yes to it while it makes me nervous it means eventually i'm not going to have the fear anymore what's something you are looking forward to other than the book release honestly life like every day 
every single day i'm excited and i think yes there are really big things i'm looking forward to like the book release like moving in moving to london moving in with my boyfriend um i want to be going on holiday soon i think i'm gonna book a trip soon there are these big things but honestly i'm just excited for the growth that comes every single day the learning the experience of like i don't know what each day is going to bring when are you getting married this was also one of the most asked questions ever what age do you want to get married what is your mindset on marriage right now do you think you would be ready to get married now and my answer to that is hell no the thought of getting married in my early 20s terrifies me it always has in your 20s you are growing at such a rapid rate let's not forget you were literally just a teenager so the gap and the jump between your early 20s being a 23 year old to being a 20 year eight year old is huge you're figuring out who you are you're figuring out what you like you're figuring out your career path um how financially stable you're going to be you're literally this is the first stage of your life that you are setting yourself up and figuring out what life path you're going to continue down all of that growth right i feel like i barely recognized who i was last year i know i'm not going to recognize who i was next year if i were to get married now i'm doing myself such a huge disservice to myself and to whoever i'm I think it's a form of self-sabotage to make life commitments when I'm still figuring out what my life is going to be. That's why I've always liked the idea of doing it in my late 20s. Not to say that you're not going to grow then and you're not going to go throughout your 30s, but that jump of growth then is not as huge and as significant as your 20s because your 20s, you're laying down the foundations. In your 30s, you know who you are, you know what you like. Even if I got married at like the age of 30 or 31, one, I'm okay with that. I know for a lot of people, you know what, no, there's not even a biological clock thing because you can freeze your eggs now and there's so many ways to have babies at a later date but also i don't want to have, have kids so it's not really an issue for me to get married late and also guys there's so much more to life than being married like i love marriage i so want to be married i can't wait for that part of my life but i have the rest of my life to be married let me enjoy just being a girlfriend right now let me enjoy my independence, you know? Have you ever regretted giving your love to a man in the past because he didn't treat you right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Honestly, some of my exes have mistreated me so bad and I'm not a fan of any of them, but they did really influence my growth journey. I think all of them were sent to me for a reason. Controversial opinion, but I think broken love is just as important as the love that's healthy and works out and that stays in your life forever because healthy good love allows you to flourish broken love allows you to learn and grow and become who you're supposed to be guys if it wasn't for some of my horrible breakups i would have never had the idea to start a self-love journey and with all of the knowledge that I learned from that, I would never be able to get online and talk about what I talk about because there would be nothing to talk about if my life always turned out great. Which then led me to now publishing an entire book about self-love. Bad, broken love is so important, so unnecessary. I think you should celebrate having been in that because the wisdom that you gain and the self-development that you gain is at such an increased rate. I think it's exciting. Guys, I'm trying out a new hairstyle. I thought we would go for like a swoopy side bang i can't believe that actually worked i'm gonna run like a curling iron over it do you have cheat and rest days in which you can eat junk and do nothing i would say the one consistent day that i do that is probably my period day like the first day of my period i will lay around i'll eat chocolate i will absolutely just do nothing for the day my desire to eat junk has gone the thought of like oh well i'm having a lazy day so i want to like stuff my face with some doritos or whatever or some sweets it gives me the ick. And I think all of the podcasts I've listened to about food, all of the just like learning about the ingredients of food and not only that, but actually implementing all of the lessons I've learned and now just eating whole healthy foods. That is such a huge difference in my energy levels, in the way I look, um, in the way I just live and feel, especially every single day, that the thought of putting certain foods in my body and knowing that it's gonna make me feel bad afterwards, not in terms of guilt, but in terms of feeling sluggish and low energy and having me break out and being inflammatory to my body, it's like, ew, no, why the hell would I do that to my body? Like, no thanks. How do you reply to those people who bring you down or point out insecurities for fun? There is so much I could say on this. I have an entire video on my main channel called how to deal with haters for a reason, okay? Because I have so much to say on this that can help you. But you know what? Recently, when I've been seeing people trying to bring me down, I laugh. Because I'm like, you think you are going to try and cancel me or bring me down or ruin my day and get away with it? You think you're going to be able to bring out a necessary, unprovoked negative energy to a person who's only trying to just share their lessons and have a good time? 
Like, yes, I know you're insecure, and yes, I know you're jealous, and, and yes, I know this is a projection, it's got nothing to do with me, but beside all of that, honey, karma is real. And so I look at these people putting negative energy out into the world and trying to bring other people down. I'm like, they're gonna get their karma and that's it. I don't need to be bothered. I'm like, you're literally actually self-sabotaging and ruining your life. And the fact that you didn't realize that is hilarious. In fact, I pity them as well. Cause I'm like, you are literally bringing down your vibration right now. Okay. The people that you're bringing down are operating at love and enlightenment and joy. And you're out here down in anger and pride and spitefulness. And it's just, I feel so sorry for them that why would I respond? I don't need to try and bring them down when they're literally already at rock bottom. I'm gonna sit here to finish the rest of the video off because we've only got like two or three questions and then I need to actually film my main channel video after this so you guys just watch me get ready for it. Are there any challenges you faced because of your ethnicity? By the way, I love you so much, time keep glowing. Thank you, I love you. Um, honestly, nothing comes to mind. It's something I just choose not to think about. I think, yes, I'm a woman and I'm South Asian on top of that, so I'm a woman of color, and those are two things that can significantly impact my career progression or my progression in life. And it, I've never focused on it. I actually try not to identify with any of those labels, and I'm just like, I'm a human being with these ideas, these values, and these dreams, and that is it. And I go into the world like that. Whether that's the right mindset to have, I don't know, but it works for me because I think when you identify so much as, but I'm a woman and I'm brown, because I did, I identified as that a lot and I was very hyper aware that that is who I was and that was like my identity all throughout school. And then I was insecure and I was like, well, do these people actually like me or I don't fit in here or I shouldn't be in this room or well, they're not gonna like me or they're gonna pick this person over me. I don't have any of those issues anymore because those labels aren't a part of my identity. I think we get so caught up in all of the things we lack that we tend to forget what our privileges are. I have the privilege of having this as my career. I have so many things that set me up that why would I voluntarily choose to focus on that? Like, sorry, I know this wasn't even your question, but I just want to make a point of this anyway, because it links into it. And yeah, like I don't see myself as a YouTuber. That's my career. That's not who I am. Who I am is how I love and how I think and what my personality is and my humor and my ideas and the way I show up for others and the way that I feel about myself and my perception of the world. And that's it. Maybe that's why I haven't experienced any problems with my ethnicity because my focus isn't on that. So I'm attracting other things. Um, how do you deal with moving to a new city for uni with absolutely no friends? That is exactly what I did. I moved to a new city. No one from my school was that. I had no friends. I was basically starting from zero. And I was so excited about that. Like, yes, you can feel nervous because of it, but I saw it as this is a fresh new start. I get to be whoever I want to be because no one knows me. There is so much power and magic in that and not everyone gets the opportunity. I think during school, I wasn't confident and I couldn't reinvent myself every year because I was surrounded in the same environment by the same people. So if people are so attached to a previous idea and version of you, it's harder for you to make yourself grow. And honestly, I think it's, I think you're worse off if you go to uni with your friends already because you were then less inclined to go out and make new friends or just fulfill your potential when it comes to meeting new people. Because you literally have nothing, you have to force yourself outside of your comfort zone so aggressively. And that is when you're gonna make the most rapid jumps in your self-growth journey. And I think we are going to end the video there just to keep it nice and concise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually had a great time filming it and just talking about what's been going on in my life and just, you know, help you guys get to know me a little bit more. I hope you related. I hope you found some advice that helped you out. I hope you just had a good time sitting there watching and I didn't bore you. Thank you so much. I'll see you same time next week for a brand new vlog. I appreciate you. Have the best day. Bye.